So to get started, my first application is under the consumer goods uh, vertical. And before we get started and show which application it is, here are some devices. So this is a smaller item. So these are the different types of scanners. Some of, there's a lot of different scanners out there that could handle this type of application that you would be able to scan this type of object with, as you'll see in, on the next slide, and uh, work with it in our software. So these are a lot of different types of blue light scanners or the handhelds with lasers. Um, that's the majority of these here on the screen, but I always like to show some example uh, examples of different types of scanners that you can use for this type of application and uh, before we jump in. So you would scan on one of these, you would set it up, and capture that information, and then you would move over to Design X. So the first one is this drone uh, prop. So there are lots of different uh, modifications that sometimes people need to make to drone uh, props to modify the different loads and things that it can carry. So this right here is a manufacturer one, and we and we scanned it, and then we can go ahead and reverse engineer that. And once you do that, you can make changes and make modifications um, to create a different kind, a different uh, variation here. So I'll just jump over to the Design X and we will take a look at the file. So just give it a second to make sure it pops up on screen there. So there we go. So here is the, the 3D scan data. You see I have the, the software open. And then like we talked about before, um, DesignX is really interesting because it is the marriage of a CAD kernel um, and our own in-house developed scan kernel. That's kind of the way I like to describe it. So we developed a ton of different scanning uh, tools throughout the many years of our software company, Geomagic. Um, I think it's over 30 years now since the first software was developed in any form, right? And um, what originally evolved there was this scan kernel where we can take point clouds and mesh them together and triangulate them together into a polygon, right? And then we came out with the ability to decimate that and reduce it down. And then it just came and built up, built up to where we had this whole suite of tools. And then along the line, we came the, to where we uh, integrated a CAD kernel to that platform. So now you have this integration between CAD and scan data in one platform. And that really is what makes DesignX unique in the market is that we have that integration. And again, I've talked about this on other, other webinars, but sometimes I like to give other details along the way um, about this software as we, as we go along discussing it. So the final product here is, so we turn that, go ahead and toggle that on, turn the mesh off. Here is the final CAD product. If I zoom in and rotate around, and you see this one from our from our list over here was very quick to do. Um, it says on there that the person that did this one originally took three hours. After you've done it, you might even be able to do it uh, quicker than that, just because a lot of times the the hours are figuring out the approach that you would want to take and then modeling from there. Um, so the first step here is I went ahead and rolled back in the history tree and we'll turn on the mesh again. So the first thing that we did is we used a, in this instance, we used mesh fit, but there's a few different ways that you could select that geometry. And you could, instead of using a mesh fit, you could use the, uh, lofted loft wizard here which will give you splines as well so there are multiple ways that you can go about doing this um, so we we fit the top and the bottom you see there and this is 
I mean, it takes seconds to do that inside of Design X. And then as you roll forward here, you see here that we, we can hide the mesh and see where we created a trimming surface to tr trim that edge. And you see here, I can hide the surfaces and just show where we drew that edge. Now with that sketch, what is interesting here is if you go into the mesh sketch setup, what we did is a silhouette, right? So we selected a plane here and then we created thickness to that and it silhouette and created this edge to that plane. And then we went into the sketch and we drew that line and then extruded it and then now trimmed it. So we'll go ahead and go forward here and see how we trim those top and those surfaces together. And then we'll just move forward and create a lofted surface there to create a blended surface and then extend that. And you see if I just go forward and trim, trim, now we've created a surface trim along that edge there. And the beautiful thing about that uh, lofted surface is we extract it automatically, but then it's editable where you can go back and make changes to each individual cross section there. And let's roll forward here to where you see, I'll just, so they extruded a surface here on the end and then trim that in using this trim here. And you can go back and hit edit here just so you can see to where we extruded a top profile down and the top and bottom that wraps around and trim that together into a surface there. And then we can come back and say, I want to add some fillets there. So you see the fillet there on the end. And then we're going to cap it. It looks like we're going to cap it, surface trim into a solid. So now you see it turned gray. It's a solid. I think now, now that it's a solid, they're going to go ahead and add back in, if I remember right here. The fillets, yep, on that surface. And let's see where we go next. And then they went ahead and did another secondary trim there. So we turn this on because that was flat on the end. So they left that extra there and then they came back and did a a trim after. Now we're going to we're going to go ahead and create the hub there. Chan for it. And then go ahead and add the rest of your finishing fillets there and then do a circular pattern and boolean merge together. So now we're almost there. Now on the back side um, some basic cleanup stuff. So it's cut, cut away, hollow out the inside, and then create your internal connections here in Boolean. And as usual, um, make sure to point out that you can send this over to CAD as well. So you can send it over to SolidWorks, Creo, Inventor, NX, AutoCAD. And depending on the CAD, um, AutoCAD is a little bit different because it's not a full featured, full history based modeler like Inventor or NX is. But this will come across as all the features with the trims and lofts and all those different things. It will come across as native entities when you send it over. Um, that, so that's a really important thing to point out 